My name is Emma Ballstar. How old are you? 91. What's your birthday? My birthday is November 3rd, 1929. Oh, okay. Where were you born? When, where was I born? Uh huh. I was born on Broad Street. Oh, okay. Broad mm -hmm. Street is in. Where is Broad Street located? Concord? I don't know whether the house is still here. Concord, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Good. All right. The house was still living down on Broad Street. I think it burned. And the house we were raised in on Lincoln Street, I think it burned. Okay. But at Lincoln Street, we was at 241 Lincoln Street. Mm. So what's your mother's name and my your father's father name? name? My mother's name was Astoria Melko. Both. Your father's name? My name, my father's name was Reuben. Both. When he left us, he changed his name to Ruben Doster. Yeah. How many, um, do you have any sisters or brothers? Yeah, I have a sister in the area. Does she live nearby? She lives on Mayor Road Drive. Oh, okay. How often do you see her? Not often. How often do you talk to her? Just about every day. Okay. On the phone? On the phone. Okay. They have good conversations. Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> What's the no one? Hmm? What's the no one? What's the no part? Y'all, um, she agree with everything you say? Nobody agrees with everything nobody say. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you remember about most of your teenage years? Teenage years? Where my first years go? My well, early years. Where did you, well, okay, what did you uh, love to I do attended, as a kid? I before? attended Logan High School. Oh, okay. All right. I went on in my early years. We lived. At, we stayed at uh, on Lincoln Street with my grandmother, Ada Melka. And uh, when we were small, my granddad, and grandpa, we called him grandpa. His name was George. He worked at uh, a slaughter pen. And we were never without food. And he worked at the slaughter pen, which was over, now known as Cook's. Property of Cook. And uh, across the hill. And uh, he slaughtered for gravy, and my uncles, they all were master slaughterers. They killed, even when I had her not, Maggie, she killed right along with the grandpa mm -hmm. and the grandson mm -hmm. and his sons, who was named Clifford Melker. Okay. And we had a garden of our own. He taught us how to raise our food. And each one had a spot of his grandchildren. And each one had to raise so much and be productive. And what we did. And he believed in work. Mm -hmm. And that's what we grew up on, working and taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you talked about Clifford. So your mother had how many brothers and sisters? My mom had three sisters. And Maggie. And Ethel. And Annabelle. Okay. And her son, her brothers was Arthur Malcolm. Cliff Melker, Guffin Melker, and William Melker. 
we called him Uncle Bill. We didn't grow up around him. He grew up in, when he grew up, he left and went to Martinville, West Virginia. But he would come in, never let you know he was coming, but he would pop in every once in a while. And then he'd go back out just like he could. Oh, okay. All right, so you had uncles and you had some aunts. Yes. Yeah, I remember um, a couple of those aunts. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Ain't ever stay in Maggie. But Bobby and William's mom. And Elsa had one son named John Davis Grill. Then, uh. Uncle Cliff. Uncle Cliff had one son named Clifford Milker. He lived in Norfolk, Virginia. He was a neighbor man. And. Uncle Cliff, he had two. Okay, but Uncle Cliff had, had a daughter. Uncle Cliff didn't have no daughter. I mean, not Uncle Cliff, Uncle. I'm talking about William. Oh, that's Arthur. Yeah, Arthur. Arthur had two kids. Mm -hmm. He had a son named Arthur, Arthur Jr. And William, which was my ace boom cone. Right. And she had how many kids? She I mean, he had. All of her kids were athletic kids. She had Felix. She had... Pokey. Um, Pokey. Tracy. Tracy and... What's the oldest boy name? That had the baby by... Oh, what is his name? Wallace. Felix. She said Felix. Wallace. Felix. Oh, Wallace. I named Wallace then. Okay. Did you say Wallace? Not yet. Wallace? Yeah. Yeah, Wallace had one kid. No, uh, Wallace had two kids. Several. And Felix had two. And... And then Gina. Gina was up. And she had two. Gina was the only child, only girl William had. had. Amongst all those boys, I was trying to think of the oldest boy. That's Greg. Pope. Greg. Greg. That's Pope. Yeah, Pope. Greg. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, I was saying Pope. the oldest one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Reggie and Chris. And Reggie. Did you say Reggie? I said Reggie. And Chris. Yeah, yeah Reggie and Chris. Two boys. One I would call him Pope. What's, oh, you saying Chris. Okay. All right, well, I'm glad because I knew that she was your good friend. Best cousin. Mm-hmm. That's his cousin. Yep. We did a little bit of everything. Okay. And by the way, when we were coming along, we also grew up close to Kim's mom. Okay. We knew all, knew, I knew when Kim's family came. They lived down the street from us. Okay, what's Kim's mother's name? His, his mom's name? Mm-hmm. Oh, her mom's name was Anna Jane. Okay. Okay. And she had, her mom name was Annie Anderson. Okay. And I can't think of your grandfather name. Miss John, Annie's husband. John Thomas. John Thomas. J.T. Hmm? John Thomas. John Thomas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mr. John. Mm -hmm. They were the best friends with uh, uh, Flora, Mary, and thought they couldn't be bothered with us. Little children running along in behind them. Oh, they're um, Kim's mother's sisters? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, I remember his family, all of them. Mm, okay. All right. So, so now do you want to go back and talk about your um, what you love about your high school or elementary or whatever? Did did you do something in particular in high school that you you know that? Oh, we, I would run for everything in high school. I could run. Yeah. Remember, we found that picture. Well, that picture when I was running for Miss Tigerette. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
everybody. Mm -hmm. Did you I play was, basketball? Uh, played basketball. I played basketball. I was a cheerleader. I went on all the games. Oh, okay. Every game the boys had, I was on the bus. Okay. It was uh, your sister a part of that? Did she? No, she wasn't. <laughs> she just was playing games. I was everybody. I was everything. Okay, you everybody friend. Have, she didn't have a chance to be nothing for me being everything. Oh, okay. All right. And Mama took care of us by herself. After my daddy went to town, I had to make time. He went to prison for killing a man. Mm. He wasn't your daddy. He's um, Robert Watts. Is that who you're talking no, about? I'm talking about my daddy. Okay, but that's not really your daddy. I don't daddy. care about whether it's my daddy or not, but that's my daddy. Okay. He's huh. the one who took care of us. He made sure everything was copathetic with what was going on at my house. He made sure we had food on the table, which my daddy didn't. Okay, well your daddy wasn't here. He left. That's right. Okay. Now what do you uh, remember most about your mom? I remember how hard she worked for us. She was... I can't explain how good and how she was in upper quarters to express. Okay. What was her background? Um, did you say that she um, had um, Indian in her? Yeah, they mix. mixed. My granddad, George Milk. Oh, uh, wasn't someone white? Then my grandmother, Ada, she was white. My granddaddy, he had it in my grandma, Faye Clark. But she would, they roared it up with my daddy's mama. My daddy Reuben, mama. Okay. They had in and in them. Okay. Also, they were from okay. down in Monroe, Lincoln, South Carolina. And we was so down in South Carolina. Always him say Cherokee. Yeah, Cherokee. My grandfather, my uh, uncle, my grandma's baby brother, he would look like a real Indian, real Indian. Okay. And he was mean as a rattlesnake. <laughs> he lived on Fox Street. He was red as a beet. Mm. Didn't you have Uncle George that had a uh, clear white? That's I'm talking about. Oh, okay. His name George. Rory. I that was my grandma's maiden name. Okay, Rory. I remember meeting him, seeing him. Uncle George. Yeah, with the white hair. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, he looked like an Indian. Um, now we talked about your upbringing, your parents, your high school, your your sister. Now let's talk about um, how you met your husband. What was your husband's name? My husband's name was Lonnie Stoke. He was from London, Winsboro, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I uh, met him through my sister-in-law, Maggie May Canada. We lived next door to each other. And she was going with his brother. And he, she was telling me about his brother. And I told her I wanted to meet his brother. So he, he brought him by one night with her when he come by to see Meg and Meg. And that's how I met Lerner. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So what year, do you remember what year you got married? Then... I know they're married in this January the 12th. Okay. I don't know what year it was. Okay, I know he passed. 
When did he pass? He passed in January also. Okay. Uh, 19... Mm, I don't know what... Yeah. 19... in the 70s. I, I said one thing and Lisa said something else. Mm, I think it was in the 80s, early, early, early 80s or late 70s, but I'm not sure. But anyway, then I met him and I had... Well, I already had one child, which was Robert Wesley. And his father's name was Marvin Davis. And then after I met, after he was born, then that's when I met Lana. And we got married and I had nine mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little Lonnie. What happened to little Lonnie? How, uh, yeah, he died from crib death. Yeah. He was a little baby. Mm -hmm. He was three months old. Yeah. And Janet was my next oldest. And he was, she was seven years old when she died. She had a brain tumor, which nobody knew anything about. And when we really found out about it, it was brain cancer. And she lived a good life. No longer than she lived. She died when she was seven years old. Okay. And then you and had, um... You were born. Sheila. Sheila was born. And every day she come home, she put you down, put Sheila down on the floor. And she tell you the tell Sheila she was going to do, she told her homework. And she told her homework. And I said, she gave Sheila her gift because she was really gifted and knowledgeable. Okay. All right, so after Sheila you had, um, Anthony. Yeah, Anthony. And Anthony, what happened to Anthony? Anthony got killed in a car accident on, on, on Valentine's Day. Yeah. They were the 14th. And after Anthony was trouble, Astoria. And after that story, Risha. Yeah. And after Risha, I had Edie and Adrian. Edie, Adrian, and Alan. Yeah, you might need to uh, talk about Alan a little bit. Man, when he was born, we called him Man. He might not want to hear it, but when man was born, he was weighed almost six, almost ten pounds. When I was born in November, man was supposed to have been born in October, and uh, man was born in November in. Uh, November 22nd, and then when he he was born, I was I was sick almost, really, really almost left this world. Mm -hmm. The doctor told me I almost died, and I stayed in the hospital. And the longer I stayed in the hospital, that's how long he stayed in. Cause I said I wanted to keep him till I got ready to come home. And uh, the man stayed there 15 days after he was born. And uh, so they told me man had to come home. Then after he, uh, because they needed the space in the nursery because they couldn't keep him in any longer. So my 
Melvin Ann and James, they would come and get him. And of course, all the rest of the children was down there. And um, they carried him down there and stayed. And so I stayed in the hospital six weeks and one day. And that was after I got there. I mean, get out when I got out of the hospital. So they kept him after I got the other children from down there, and they wanted to keep him till I was able to take care of him. Who was they? Got on my. Who was they? Baby Ruth and James, James uh, Ed. Right. And the more, the longer he stayed, the more they got attached to him. So when I got ready for him to come home, they didn't want him to come home. So it was a twist and a turn between the two of us. And I, I got on my feet and then they didn't want to let him go. Because they got attached to him. So they got attached to him and mm -hmm. that's how it was. Mm -hmm. You can get him where you want him, but let him stay down here. Okay. So when I got ready for him, I couldn't get him. They had just got two tests on. So that's how man got two mothers. Mm -hmm. Two, Burr Ruth and you. But y'all shared them equally. Yep. And that's where he was, and that's where he come up at, down Burr Ruth. <laughs> Okay. That was the hardest thing that ever happened to me. Whenever he decided to stay down there? So, now all I did was see him when I got ready to see him. Because he was little and you were, uh, you were sick. Yeah. And she took care of us, all of us. She yep. has always taken care of us, my roof has. Anytime you had to go in the hospital. They were open there. They were open there. That's right. Yeah. That was surely a, a brother in law. Yes. Yes. And I loved him to death. So that's how man became Ruth Bagger's son. And my son. <laughs> and Eddie's son. <laughs> More so Berman's son. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I have a Berman boy. Yeah. Okay. So, um, any other kids you want to talk about? The other children? Well, all the rest of my children. I think all of them did good. They made. They went to school and they graduated, and most of them went on to college and got lucrative jobs and doing pretty good. Okay. But I had one to push them, encourage them, and that was the one that Jennison pushed. And I said that uh, she gave Sheila her knowledge, and Sheila pushed them as far as she could push them to go and as far as they would go to college, get an education, and do good. And with her talking to all of them and telling them what, was about, what everything was about, she got all of them in college. If they didn't stay, she got them there. She helped them to get there. And the most of them that didn't go, but no fault of hers, because she helped them to get there. They got there, but they didn't finish. Had one to get there and had six weeks to make, and wouldn't go back. That was Adrian, don't look oh, like. Oh, yeah, Adrian, yeah. I six weeks <laughs> from graduating. Mm-hmm. Either she went to Central. She didn't have no other desire to go back. She went to Bob Scotia for 
Bobby Stutcher for a while. I think she did. Well. Man with the A&T. Well, man with the A&T. Uh, Brisa went to Salisbury. I mean, went to went to Selma, come back and finish the Barber Scotia. Right. Mm -hmm. And Anthony went to Barber Scotia. He graduated. Mm -hmm. West. Mm -hmm. Come out of service. He went to Bible School, to graduated. Anthony to graduate. Everybody graduated. So, Tubby. Tubby, she graduated. Tubby graduated. She's a school teacher. Astoria, named after your mother. Yes, Astoria. Where she go? What college? Bible School, she college. What about Sister May? What about Sister May? Sister Howie. Yeah. Sister Howie went to North Carolina Central. Sheila yeah. Howie, we call Sheila it. Sheila Howie went we to call North Sister Carolina Howie. Central. Mm -hmm. And she's the one spearheaded all this. But how? But so I did tell her when she started out. I said, "Now you go to college. I'll help you all I can. But you know, I can't send you Money. to college." So she. Looked into all these, um, how she could go. Mm -hmm. She had Miss Pearson to help her. Miss Pearson. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, she finished college and she found out as uh, an accountant and she's knew all the ups and outs and ends of getting in college and how to get college and get an education through grants and different. Mm -hmm. During that time it was cheaper though. Yeah, during that time it was cheaper. Okay. And you didn't have to do a whole lot of paying back. I talked right. about the wisdom now. Now I talk about my grandkids. You want to talk about your grandkids now? Yeah. How many grandkids you have? Mm, that's what, how many grandkids did you come all up? Let's see. You that's what you your first grand. Start with your you first grand. You got them on the sheet, don't you? Yeah, I had, uh, West got three grands. My, uh, West has three children. Sheila sure has one. Tubby has one. Anthony has two, had two. Um, Risa has two. Edie has five. Adrian had four. And Man had two. Mm. Okay, My that's twenty. Kids. That's twenty-one, then, right? Yeah. You got twenty-one grandkids. My grandkids are. Uh, Wes had great grand. You talking about great grand now? But great grand, yeah. Yeah, I believe you got um, great grand. Wes had one. Yeah. Tubby had three. And they had five. Maurice. Mm -hmm. Maurice. 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 He had two. Yeah, Maurice. Yeah, Maurice. Hakeem. Yeah, Hakeem. Hakeem, too. Well, well, one, one on the way. <laughs> Hakeem. Hakeem. July. And then Chandra and Calandra. They have, um, okay. They, it's five between them, between those two. So you, uh, we didn't count them up, but you got probably about twenty. No, I got two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe you got about twenty. So and Tiffany got three. Tiffany, 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 Tiffany got about Tiffany, and Anthony. Sip none. Well, I got to. Sip doesn't have any. Oh, so Sip get married tomorrow. Who? Sip. He's getting married tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, I thought they moved it to July. 
Well, that's, they're going to have something oh, okay. else in July. Okay. They're going to get married tomorrow. Okay. Good. Um, those are my grands and... Uh, mm -hmm. Now, who was your first, the only, your first grand? John is my mm -hmm. first grand. Rashawn Malik. Starch is your Star. first grandson. Okay. Beg your pardon? He was your first grand, right? That's the first grand, yes. And then how did you feel about that first grand? Oh, that was the first one. Boy, I was... Every payday I got that baby something, every, every payday. What was the first thing you got? When you were born. What, you, what was the first thing you got? A onesie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Onesie t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And rubbers. And rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> and some rubber pants, because you couldn't find those little rubber pants too often, too fast. Made mm -hmm. sure he didn't wet nobody when he put it on this vest. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you know the story, whenever you're holding your grandchildren, just like with your babies, you have to how do you christen them? They usually do what? Say so what when you hold them? You usually, they usually fall, don't they? Yeah. Uh-huh. You let them fall on the floor, didn't you? you let them fall on the floor? Mm -hmm. All of them done fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> she fell on I think that's what's wrong with Adrian. She fit the floor mm -hmm. too many times. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's what you call christening pretty yep. much. Uh-huh. Chris and them when they hit the floor, uh -huh. was the first, when they first hit the floor. Mm. <laughs> they didn't know what it was, that poor baby. Mm -hmm. But they didn't fall far. No, not too far. Not they didn't too fall too far, far boy. Mm -hmm. at all. So who was That's, your second? Who was my second mm -hmm. grand? Mm -hmm. Jamal. So you get two. Jamal Antonio Smith Dodge. But his daddy was Smith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Winslow mm -hmm. and Rashawn's father was Reggie Cofield. And Jamal. He liked to wear what? Clipper. What did he like to wear on his feet? Uh, what? what did he like to wear on his feet? Jamal. Jamal. Mm -hmm. Remember Jamal when he was a baby? A little boy? Yeah. When he was a little boy? When he was a little boy. Oh, his boots. Cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. You could hear him wear. And his pamper. He wear nothing but a pamper and cowboy boots. Click clocking all the way everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's true. Boy, he was a mess. Mm-hmm. Then he had this little, what was this little? What was this little dog? Right. Mm -hmm. What was this dog he had? Oh yeah, um, what's that thing called? My buddy. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy. Jamal had this dog, my buddy and them boots and his pamper walking all over the house. Mm -hmm. Boy. <laughs> those were the those were the babies for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's long time. Then all oh, here come the next one. Chandler Grand. Was that Chandler? Yeah. Next yes. one was Commander and Chandler. Yes. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. twins. Mm -hmm. And after them, wow. I think about any after when they was, I mean, Annabelle when they were born. Ain't, uh, you talking about Annabelle, you're yeah, aunt. Annabelle, aunt. My aunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She kept them. Yeah. Yeah. She had them in both she arms then. Grandma. She was my uh, mama's baby sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she stayed here with us. And she was there. She carried them around. And she kept them. Like they was her own. Mm -hmm. And she and Sean used to have it all the time going to the store. <laughs> She had Sean can her to the store. And when she get to the store, she didn't have enough money. So I had to bail out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to point out of them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one mm -hmm. time.
and get her Pepsi Cola in her bag of chips and she was out of there. But uh, John was a tax cab to the store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I, I meant to ask you a little bit more about Anthony. You know, I know we didn't. You know, I know he passed and on um, Valentine's Day. But um, what did uh, Anthony like to do? You know, because we lived in front of a pool. What did Anthony do in the pool? Oh, Anthony loved to go there, that go out at night and crawl under the the gate, under the gate, and get in the pool and swim for the night. Lincoln Pool, mm -hmm. boy. That's why he can swim too. That's why he can swim. Yeah. He was a good boy, but he did some crazy stuff. <laughs> that was my baby. Yeah. That was Cheryl's baby too. Mm. Cheryl was crazy about him. <laughs> no, nothing he did. <laughs> mm. But too bad for Cheryl. Mm. <laughs> All right, so. After you raised all of uh, all of us, then you started. Well, I know you worked in uh, Candle Mill for a while. Yeah. Worked in Candle Mill for ten years. And then, uh, after that, okay. you left there. I left Candle Mill, stayed home a while, and then I got a job at Logan Daycare, and I worked there for thirty, thirty some odd years, and. Help real some of the kids around here, mm -hmm. and some of them grew up to be fine kids. And well, I don't want to say anything bad about them, but they were still good kids. But some did more with their life than others did, and we tried to instill in them a better life. Try to do. Go and do better. In other words, I tried to raise them like I did my own. Some of them did great. They'll come out and did real good. And some just stopped in their tracks. But still, they were still loving kids. And I enjoyed working at Logan. I enjoyed working with kids. Mm -hmm. They still come by and, and see you still, sometimes, right? Yep. Some of them drop by. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they all are, but... They come by and see you? Then the parents, they mm -hmm. they remember me. Mm -hmm. I might not remember them, but I remember, they remember me. Yep. I know you're crazy about Gary. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gary's my cousin. Mm -hmm. With well, so was one of my students. Boga. Gary Boga. Yeah. Gary Boga and some of my kin, other kin people. Mm -hmm. Like the Bills and I can't think of all of them. Okay. Um, so, um, what did you do with church? Oh, I was a member of First Baptist. Remember, I remember first missionary Baptist. Reverend uh, Hawkins during Reverend that time. Hawkins. Mm -hmm. I was baptized when I was twelve years old. Yeah, Bird said that um, that you and um, my grandmother Astoria, you all stayed at, at uh, First Baptist, and when she found out you had to be dipped in water, mm -hmm. that's when she started going to Grace Lutheran. Oh, yeah, they roof with the Grace. <laughs> Went over there where Mama's Mama went. Grandma, Mama. Mama. Cause she that didn't want to dip her. in the water. Mm -hmm. huh? she, she, didn't to, she didn't want to dip. She didn't want to dip in the water. Baby, Baby was scared, scared of water. Oh, she's scared of water. That's why she switched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the churches were right across the street, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right on yeah. Chestnut Street. Yes. My grandma had a grandma Melka had a brother, uncle lived with a bug. Boots and church, which is now where the parsonage is. Mm -hmm. Boots and church. And his name was Doom Parker. Hmm. My grandmother was a Parker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
What message would you like to share with your family? What message would I like to share with, with your family? I don't know. I don't know, really. Okay. I'll tell you what. If and when I leave here, I want no squabbling and bickering and a bunch of nonsense going on. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well, I ain't got nothing. I ain't gonna have nothing. And what little bit I got, don't get ain't no bickering over it. Okay. All right, so what are you most below. thankful for? What am I most thankful for? Yes. Lifelong jeopardy. Oh, okay. That's good. And I will never say I don't like, I like everything that has happened to me throughout the years mm -hmm. that I can remember. Best of all, I love my kids. All of them. Ain't none of them bad and ain't none of them good. <laughs> they're all the same to me. Okay. But there's some I, I look at. I can knock upside the head a little more. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what do you think the world needs more of right now? Love. Okay. And stuff that uh, we've gone through with. And you've gone through with. Ain't nothing compared to what we've gone through. Because it looked like it's all coming back home. Mm -hmm. Same thing we went through with looked like it's going to happen all over again. Mm -hmm. There's uh, this pandemic that's come in mm -hmm. and set things back. And Trump didn't do no good in helping it. That's the principle. Because Formal. we got this segregation coming back. Get him out of there. Which don't need to be, shouldn't be coming back. Because too many people lost their lives behind it. And these kids now don't listen. Mm. So you're talking about voting and you know how they're trying to take the vote away from voting rights right. and everything. This is something we never had. Yeah. You can talk and to you blue in the face. And they don't listen. But white man trying to take over again. In fact, he shouldn't be crying about what's happening. Because they need to look back and see how they've done us. And it's all happening to them all over again. White people have taken everything the black man had. Now they're scared the black man won't take what they got. And black man, if they act like they got some sense, they'll get it. But the Bible says what's first shall be first, what's last, what's first is last, last will be first. Mm -hmm. 